There it is. Ask the Podcast Coach for October 15th, 2022. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that music that means, hey, it's Saturday morning. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm Dave Jackson from the school of podcasting.com. And on today's show, we're going to talk about show notes. What are they? Conversations versus podcasting. We have a fun segment of what's in the box and some mystery gear will be showing up. And the person that's going to help me trudge through those is the one and only Jim Cullison from Home Gadget Geeks. Find him at theaverageguy.tv and find him right there. Jim, how's it going, buddy? Greetings, Dave. Happy Saturday morning to you. That's quite an intro. Thank you for changing that up a bit. You're a little hot for me this morning. Uh, All right. Maybe with the things we have going on. But looking forward to this Saturday morning. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, always fun to uh, to do that. And um, let me. Uh, are, are you thirsty? It, it could just be me too, but I am thirsty. Yes, I am. Thirsty. You are thirsty. Okay, yeah, excellent. Man, Here we go. We'll do the the awesome ask the podcast coach coffee pour, <laughs> and uh, that of course is brought to you by Mark over at podcastbranding.co. If you are in need of podcast art, if you're in need of maybe a lead magnet or a whole new website, or I had a member of the School of Podcasting that said, hey, uh, you know, I have a Divi site and it's kind of horked. You know, do you know anybody that can come in and fix it? And I said, absolutely, I do. Uh, That would be the one and only Mark from podcastbranding.co. Because the great thing about it is he is a podcaster and he's also an award-winning graphic artist. And it just so happens that if you are a person that's into Divi, which is a, uh, a really popular kind of site builder. Uh, Mark really is is a master of Divi. So if you want to look good, get some new artwork, get a new website, get a branding kind of uh, audit, Mark does it all. It's over there at podcastbranding.co. He's been around for years, and he will take care of you with one-on-one service. Check him out, podcastbranding.co. Thanks to Dan Lefebvre over there, based on a true story podcast at based on a true story podcast.com. And if you're looking for a podcast to listen to that brings was it real to the idea of the movie or television show that you're watching, Dan covers those. He does a super great job, Dan. Thanks for your sponsorship, for your mug sponsorship. I think we've been doing this for a while, man. This thing is a champ. It just holds up, keeps things cool, keeps things hot. Thanks, Dan. And one of the things I saw on Facebook this morning, and of course, if you want to jump in, we're at askthepodcastcoach.com slash live, and you can also go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash join, and that will jump you right into the um, the video. And somebody in Facebook said, like, show notes, metadata, like, what is that stuff, and, and what do I need? So, Jim, what do you do for, for show notes? What do you consider are good show notes? Wow, this is a this is a great question because I think it's it depends for it, just about absolutely everybody. I know some folks who spend a lot of time doing show notes. At Gallup, we actually transcribe, make those part of the show notes. So a paragraph that kind of summarizes it, that's written content based on what it was about. It's unique. Robot doesn't write it. I have a person that actually writes that paragraph, right? Um, uh, we include some, uh, um, some pull quotes, right? So three quotes from each of the, from the show somewhere. And again, I have somebody pick those A robot doesn't pick those, but I have somebody pick those out. And then we do auto transcriptions and they're fixed by somebody. So they're perfect and, and they're done. That's what we do at work at home. I write a paragraph. I use otters summary timing, like the one that you can't mm. get. <laughs> Sorry. about. That. I haven't checked yet. I should be. In theory, right? Wasn't it going to come at the end of September or something like that? So Yeah, so I use the summary because no, I, I just don't get the people to read the show notes on uh, Home Gadget Geeks like I do at Gallup. So just a summary with timestamps. I've And I've got a, a plug-in that helps. You can click on that and go right to that spot. So two different ways uh, for two different platforms, just kind of depending. We've, we've taken a lot of audience feedback on what they're looking for for show notes. And then incorporated that in. So that's those are kind of the two different ways that I do it. What about you? Yeah, I first of all, when I hear metadata, I hear a lot of people that are actually talking about ID3 tags, which are inside the MP3 file, which A, 
do nothing, zero, in terms of SEO for you. In fact, the only app I know right now that uses the ID3 tags inside the MP3 is overcast and it only uses the image. Everything else in app world is from your feed. And then the only time ID3 tags come into play is if somebody downloads the file to like their computer. But I'm with you. I used to put whatever I put on my website in my show notes. I don't do that anymore. I do a paragraph. I try to have a paragraph that explains what's in the show and how they're going to benefit if they listen. Because when I asked my audience, I go, what do you want? They said, enough of a description to let me figure out if I'm going to listen to this or not. And then links. Boy, if you don't put links to, like, if we mention a book or whatever, uh, or a guest in their website or whatever, if you make somebody Google after listening to your show, that is not a good experience is what basically what I got from from my audience. So uh, I, I usually do that. And then what I do, and of course I'm going to have my call to action. So whatever that is, is, is in my show notes and anything like that. My, especially the school of podcasting has multiple topics. So it's kind of weird, but usually I just put the basics there. Then I go to my website and that's where I expand everything. In fact, I usually write a blog post to help me focus on what the heck am I trying to say? So I take that, add it out. Cause that's really, I want a ton of words there because I'm trying to attract Google in the apps, I'm trying to attract my listener to hit play. And so that's what I do. it. And for me, I, it's just one of those, like, I never, if I, uh, if I have somebody who put like a transcript in their feed and I'm looking for that link for the book and I got to go scroll, 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 oh, hold on, scroll, keep scrolling. Oh, here it is way down there at the bottom. Okay, finally, 10 minutes later, there it is. For me, transcripts are not a place to be. It, that's something that's going to the app. I'm like, that needs to go on your website. And and even that, I I had a client this week that did a transcript. And I think they did the thing where you, you kind of, uh, you know, they, they fixed it for a human reading because of, yeah. Yeah. but they had no subheadings. Yeah, and I was totally, like, yeah. yeah, I'm like yeah, subheadings. Are, subheadings in ours for sure. Cause otherwise it just becomes a big, long um, piece of, you know, text basically. Right. So I, I think that's important that you get, by the way, I, we put them at the very end, but we do include them. I mean, they, they are there. Our, our listeners want to see them. They don't want another click to go find them. Like they, they just want to see them. They want to be able to go to the post, scroll to the bottom, see the show notes or see the, see the transcripts. We, and because we put subheadings in there, I do feel like they are part of the, of the post, right? It's not just here's a dump of what we said, but we try to use our transcripts to help people navigate through the conversation. We do find people, <laughs> this is going to sound weird. They don't want to listen to the show. They want to read the show notes. <laughs> they want to read the transcript for whatever reason, right? No, it's not wrong. It's just what they want. They're faster readers or they want to skim through it or they want to do a control F and find some things. So I'm actually a big advocate of keeping your transcripts in your show notes. I, listen, I hear people say, ah, oh, SEO, blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever. Our listeners want it. That's where they want to see them. That's where we're going to give them to them. Yeah. Bottom line, what does yeah. your audience want, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, for me, transcripts are, especially when people put them on their website. In other words, if I just take a basic otter thing and throw it on my website, that's just like the lazy man's show, <laughs> show notes. Because A, just because it's more words, it doesn't mean that Google, Google's looking for good content. And when you put a straight transcript, that's bleh, like, eh. and I don't know about you, but when I see a straight transcript, cause you can spot them. Um, I'm, I like almost immediately eject. I'm just like, mm, no, but, it, it, but when you, it, right. Yeah. If you lead with it, that's the problem that you're seeing. Like if you're showing up and the first thing you're seeing is the transcript, that's when you, that's when you eject. I think if you, if you're clear about it in your show notes, like, this is the, is transcript. the transcript. Yeah. Right. But I, I've just seen people that like, they just go to Otter, copy, paste. And there's, see, the thing you did is subheadings. That's to me, yeah. the, the, that's the one I'm like, okay, this is a transcript, but at least they, it's a transcript that appears to have been massaged, shall we say, to, to be readable. Edited. edited yeah. Right. Or, yeah. or in some cases we still are word for word, but I think that we use H1 tags and, and I'm going to get a little technical. And this is an area yeah. I don't know as much about, but I think we use H1. <laughs> it's time for a power rant. Oh, wrong button. Wrong oh. button. I'm not power ranting. It's, it's. And now, there we go. Oh, he's been waiting for this. It's time for Jim to get his nerd on. 
I love the kids. I forgot about the kids. I, I love what he says, and he's been waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's I forget. So, anyways, I, I forget. This is not going to yeah. be too technical, but we use we use a certain kind of header tag on the HTML so that that calls out, and I think Google looks for those. That's another thing it looks for as it's going through the. So don't take my word for it. I I, I have people who do that kind of stuff where I well, work and are way smarter than me. That's a great point because back in the in the early days of me doing websites, I would highlight text and make it bold and maybe make it bigger, which looked the same as if I had given it like an H2 or an H3, um, which is just a heading style. But Google knows that's a heading when it's in a heading whatever tag. And so it's better to apply a heading tag than to just make it bold and bigger because you're missing – potential google juice so yeah uh, well and listen don't do everything for google i mean mm. yeah, that's a struggle because you know you want to do you know certainly you want it up there in the search rankings right but then if it if it's not meeting the needs of the people that you're you're doing the podcast for right you know I, that's a struggle there's a balance in there and so i we I think we <clears throat> we look at visibility first. So land on the page. What does it look like? Is it inviting? Will people actually make their way through it? Is it helpful? The pull quotes up front, or that just help people? They could also grab them and tweet them if they wanted to do it that way, right? There's one of those those kinds of things. Gives them an idea of what's in the program. So we kind of do the funnel approach, right? So we get very, very helpful up front as far as summarizing things, and then that summary kind of builds out and gets more and more specific and ends with the transcript, which is very specific. It's still got some helpful bits in there. One of the things we have a, a custom built CMS, so we can't, we can't put links like, uh, in, I, I have a WordPress plugin for home gadget geeks, where if I just put what looks like a timestamp, it automatically, uh, uh, points mm -hmm. that right to that part in the audio. I wish we had that at work. That would be super great. I've asked to build it and they're like, yeah, we'll do it in 2027. So it's like, oh, okay, well, that's obviously not going to get done. But I think that's a helpful bit, too, to be able to say, hey, I'm saying this here on this timestamp. In the transcript, they could click on it and go listen to it right in that spot if they wanted to. I think that's helpful as well. I've been playing, it's funny, uh, Podverse. Dot, I believe FM is an app I've been playing with. And they have a really cool clip feature because what they do is they just take the original file and somehow in their software, they're like, oh, the beginning of the clip plays here and the end of the clip plays here. And then they actually, you can see what other people have clipped of that episode, but it makes it super easy. I think easier than any app I've ever used to make clips and then share them. And then when people click on it, it goes to the Podverse website where you can see that clip along with the other clips that other people have done, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, Patrick says, Elsie Escobar is a great example and resource for your show notes. Yeah, if you go to the feed.libson.com, you can see there an example of here's what we talked about. Um, I think she even put timestamps and then uh, links to everything that they they talk about. Um, DR has a thing. I try to put links into books that were mentioned on a client's episode, but the client said they didn't want people to leave my website. That is a person that is not serving their audience. It's all about them, and I get that, that, hey, I got them on my website. This is what I want them to do. Maybe not. <clears throat> What's a good one? I would then put them in the show. I'd do the opposite then, I guess. First of all, I'd, I'd say to my my client, mm, is that really? like? Because what you do is you open it in a new window so that when they close the Amazon link, it's there in the background. But to me, I, I see that, and I'm like, um, like but it's, you it's know, client's thought, always though. right. Yeah. Well, it's a good thought. You, we, we say a lot of times, I mean, the reason we have live pages is so that folks come to our site, they consume it on our live page and maybe not on YouTube, right? You want to, you've done all this work to create all this great marketing for your site. And then you want that to be effective for them there. You don't want to send them other places. So I think there's a balance in there somewhere, like everything, you know, there's kind of a balance. I get it, but it's pretty frustrating when, at least with our audience, it's pretty frustrating if somebody mentions a resource and then we don't link out to that resource. That's a little frustrating for them. I, I hear, I, I get feedback on that sometimes. They're like, hey, why didn't you include that link? It doesn't look like you're being very friendly. Yeah. Well, and I think show notes are one of those things, like I've seen people that literally will do a sentence and a half. Like that's it. 
Like yeah, there's I'm, no, there, yeah, there's no show notes police that are come by and go, I'm sorry, we're going to revoke your, uh, your podcasting license. Uh, you didn't write enough show notes. Um, or this one, Fred says, I recommend both links as well as images. I don't do images in the thing that goes to the app. So in my media host, I'm not putting images. I'll put the image, you know, for the episode, but this is where you can use that as a lead magnet and say, I remember I was coaching a, a travel podcast and they had all these amazing pictures on their website. And I said, you need to mention that in your, your episode, like, Hey, you know, I was on this sailboat in the sunset and I took a picture of it. And it was like, mention, Hey, if you go to the website, dot com slash whatever, you can see the sailboat. I said, because what that does is you get the people that want to go deeper into the story. Or if you're talking about, you know, this awesome coffee maker, you know, you got to see it. It's blah, blah. Okay. Links are in the show. You know, go out to the website. For me, I try to keep my, anything that goes into the apps, I try to keep as simple as possible. I'm doing bold and bullets. That's it. Any other formatting from that, I don't want to poke the bear that might make things invalid. Not that an image would make it invalid, but I'm, I just keep it super simple for that. So, um, you, you, know. you think there's been, a, I think there was a trend early on, maybe 10 years ago to have <clears throat> images for like, if you were talking about equipment or things like that, you would put right. the image and make the image a link. I think that trend is, I mean, does it, it feels like it's going away uh, in some, in some regards or, or am I wrong on that? I've actually never heard of that. That when I look at that, I go, "That's actually a, maybe a better idea." Click here to see the picture, and it just links to the JPEG or whatever it is. But I well, rather send yeah. it to my the JPEG has got the link to whatever. Like we would in, in in the technology podcast, we review a lot of equipment, and so you'd on your page, you'd put the picture of it, and if you clicked on the picture, it would take you to that at Amazon or whatever. A lot of folks used it for affiliate marketing type things, but I'm yeah. I'm seeing. I feel like I'm seeing less, well, and maybe this is it, less graphics that are, aren't advertisements, if that makes sense. In other words, mm. you know, I add a graphic, that's just a graphic, but if it's an ad that I'm putting in there, you can definitely see the ad, right? Yeah. That, that, that's in there. And so maybe ads have replaced those graphics. Like if people feel like if they're putting more graphics in their post, it's taking away from the ads. I, I don't know. I, I, I hadn't thought about that in a while, but it seems like I'm seeing less of those kinds of posts. Yeah, I'll have to. I know I, I, there's somebody at uh, Libsyn that just smashes everything into her, her show description. And the reason I remember is because, you know, like one time she tried to put a table. And I was like, mm, you got to remember. And what, where this usually happens is if you're using your media host, so be it Libsyn, Buzzsprout, Captivate, whoever, if you're using them for your main website, well, then you want all these images and stuff in there. And that's where I'm like, that's where it gets sticky. Cause you're like, all right, well, you can't put a table into an HTML yeah. RSS feed. That's not going to work. So yeah. it gets, gets kind of tricky. I, uh, I think maybe the trend on that has been to go from pictures embedded, or, you know, to take your, your, uh, your text and embedded around pictures yeah. in your site to full screen pictures because of mobile. Right. And, and thinking through that, you don't want that experience where text is flying all over the place. So I think in a lot of cases now it's full screen mobile. I mean, yeah. Full screen uh, yeah. You, yeah. So you might have text and then an image yeah. and then more text yeah, instead of trying to wrap it around. Yeah. I can see that. That's right, yeah. uh, Craig says my wife has really bad hearing disability and transcripts are important for folks like her, although they usually aren't well implemented in players. Yeah. And that's where um, people are talking about subheadings. We kind of hit that. That's a great way to break up because here's the thing. People don't read. People do not read. When they go to a website, they skim. And it's those subheadings that then have them go, okay, I think I am going to read this. I know that's how I am. When I read that, I was like, no. Nah, uh, and then I was like, yeah, that's kind of what you do, Dave. Uh, so it's, it's tricky that way. Well, you um, know. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Dave says if you like to post transcripts, his, his preference is to send them in exchange for an email. Uh, get those folks on a newsletter. So it's like, hey, here's the, here's the show notes. If you need a transcript, it's going to cost you an email address. So we, we went that way on Home Gadget Geeks. So I mm. I stopped providing transcripts because just nobody was reading them, uh, and and I took them out. Nobody noticed. So I put transcripts available upon request. So folks that went uh, at Gallup, we definitely use those transcripts then to create an SRT, push that into YouTube, and fix the YouTube transcripts. 
uh, probably every other show, my editor contacts me and says, what did you, <laughs> what did you mean to say here? <laughs> and, and so he'll send me the otter, you know, we'll jump into otter together. And what, what I love about otter is you can listen as it's, you know, it does kind of the karaoke style where you push play and it'll play the audio while it's going through the, the, the transcripts. And just, I think a couple days ago, I was like, Mark, I, Mark's my editor. I was like, I have no idea what I said there. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know why I said that or what it was, what it was meaning. And he's like, okay, we'll just go word for word. I said, perfect. Yeah. I don't think it's going to, we're going to find anything, but that is a helpful tool. Then I think for, for us to take and move into, um, to move into YouTube as he's doing the transcripts, the pull, if, listen, if you're doing transcripts and you're not doing pull quotes, you're, you're missing the boat. Like pulling, pulling, um, as you're going through the transcripts, you're seeing all the words, you're seeing these great quotes, just take time to write it down and say, this was a great quote. This was a great quote. Then at the end, pull those out and put them in places as pull quotes in your show notes. It's a huge miss because you've, you've already done the time to get it done. Make sure you get in those pull quotes. And then you can reuse those on Twitter or on wherever, Facebook, wherever, Instagram, whatever you want to do. You can well, reuse it, those pull quotes. It's great because Patrick says, I'm doing a lot with more quotes yeah. these days. Yeah. It's a great way to break up the transcript as well. For and sure. then um, Gary, speaking of Twitter, says, click to tweet, as in click the number two tweet dot com. Yep. Great resource. It's free. You can use there's a, a level you can pay for, but you can you know do that. And so here's how this works. You go over and you type the tweet for your guest. So it's all set up. And then you click a button and it gives you a link. And if your guest is logged into Twitter, all they have to do literally is click that link. It types the tweet for them and all they have to do is click send. That's an amazing one. And then coach Dave mentioned this a couple episodes ago. I craft my notes in text metrics. I need to go deeper into that, adjust the SEO and build the notes. Uh, so, uh, for them to complement the show and vice versa. And when I looked at text metrics, I was like, huh, I need to come back and look at this later. And I never did, but it, it looks like a cool tool. I know, um, Oh, uh, Longtail Pro is an SEO suite that's been around forever, and they have a lifetime deal right now going on at um, AppSumo. I saw that come up, and I was like, huh, because I used to have it, and then I didn't up. I mean, like decades ago, I used to use that, and I was like, hmm, I might uh, go over and I don't know about you. AppSumo was a dangerous place for me. <laughs> You've mentioned that before, and so yeah. that makes me feel like you struggle with it from time to time. To, <laughs> oh, there's some great apps, and you get too many. If you buy too many at once, you you know, you, then you end up never coming back to some of them, right? Yeah. The uh, Coach Dave says the SEO step added to my workflow has really elevated the ranking on my of his site. I don't like to obsess over SEO because boy, can you? Uh, that I mean, there are people that's their job. I'd rather obsess over communicating the message and connecting. That is exactly. And that's something I need to do more. I, I sniff SEO about three times a month. And I'm like, mm. see, he's got it like every every episode. I use a, a headline tool for a while that was helping me make better headlines. That was kind of cool. But even that, there are times when you're like, it's, you know, the episode is about blank. I don't need more you know, emotional words and I need more. <laughs> it's like, look, it's, it's about blank. Let's just do that. So what, what do you uh, think you spend Dave uh, building the show notes for a show? If you were to, if you were to guess, you know, I know we don't time these things but. For, for the app or the website. Uh, Both. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Both my different. website, probably a half hour to 45 minutes. Cause there are times where I am, if it's a, like today, we're going to talk maybe about what's the difference between a conversation and a, and a podcast. That's going to be a blog post first. Cause I, I know kind of that that's a topic I want to talk about, but I right now still have things. I have a couple things in my head, but I need to flush those out so that they really like, what are you trying to say here? Because otherwise it'll be just a tangent, you know, all over the place. And people go, well, I think he's kind of trying to say this. I'm like, I really need to come up with a focus sentence. You know, um, the difference between a conversation and a podcast is blank. And here are paragraphs to reinforce that statement. That's kind of how I work. Um, so that's where in some cases, if I have a subject and I really want to, that, that just helps me, which is funny because I'm doing it now. <laughs> as he As he's tried to say this sentence like six times. It helps me focus on what I'm trying to say. 
And so that's basically why I do a blog post. And then from there, again, I take the, maybe the first opening paragraph, put that into my media host, my, all my links, my calls to action. And, and there we go. So, but that can take me depending on if a football game is on in the background, you know, an hour, uh, maybe 30 minutes. If I'm focused, I've, I've got a, uh, an app on my PC that I, if I turn it on, there's one word, I think it's just called lockdown and it doesn't let me do anything. It's like, no, no Facebook, no YouTube, no social media. Like I think I'm going to open up word and a couple other things. So, um, how about you? How long does it take you? Um, 45 minutes Yeah, for, for home gadget geeks. Uh, it's, it's a, we probably spend just on show notes, probably four or five hours a gallop on each show because of the transcripts. Yeah. Right. So, but the listeners a little bit bigger and the, in the game, I mean, because we're doing this from a professional standpoint, the bars set a little bit higher and I can't, I can't get away with transcripts by request and I can't get away with yeah. misspellings in my transcripts and I can't get away. Right. That, that stuff needs to be. And so, you know, I, I have a full-time editor that, that, uh, that does those for us, which is pretty nice. It's a privilege be for sure. Not a lot, not a lot of podcasters have that. For me, it's a privilege. Yeah. So DR says, so that whole thing about pictures on a website, is that considered a call to action? And if so, is that my one call to action for the episode? No. So if I said, you know, there's this time when I was using a microphone and it was really pretty, it was cool. It was gold with, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, if you want, I'll have a, I'll, I'll have a picture of that out in the show notes out at school of you're at it, uh, ask the podcast coach.com slash four eleven. That's just a thing. And then, you know, be sure to put it there. Like right now I have a, a text message going on behind me. It says otter text metrics, click to tweet long tail pro. Those are the things we've mentioned so far that I need to go get links for because those are the links. So it's one of those things as I'm listing and I'm editing, that's one of the things I'm, I'm listening to as well. Um, so it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's tricky with show notes. And the other thing is some people go, yeah, Dave, I don't have 45 minutes. Okay. Do what you can, you know? And that's where I, I think it was comedian Jay Moore once had like two sentences. And I was like, eh, maybe he was getting on a plane to go to a comedy gig or something like that. So, um, you know, so that's, it, it really depends on, um, cause Fred's saying, Hey, images with links that, that has been emphasized for key blog writers. Right. This is where I'm differentiating though. I'm like, Hey, my website is my blog. I'll put images and all the chocolatey goodness over there. But the stuff I put into Libsyn or Buzzsprout or Captivate that's going to go out to an app, I'm like, mm. I again, it's consider the source. This is the tech support guy that sees how that can mess up your feed if done improperly. And, I'm, and I'd rather drive, again, also consider the source. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to get you to my website so you can sign up for my membership site. So my goal is to get you to my website. Now, if that's not your goal, throw as many images in there and just make sure they don't mess up your feed. Um, so... Um, yeah, uh, DR say, I'm looking for something similar to AppSumo. Is there a name for it that I can put into the search? Uh, I'm not sure what she's looking for, but, um, so in the end, you know, show notes are, are kind of tricky. Uh, they can be as long or as short as you want. I, I had somebody I saw on Facebook that said, um, if I do a solo show, do I have to use a script? And I was like, it's not like somebody's like all of a sudden you have a knock on the door and a siren and you know, hey, I'm sorry again the you know the the script police. I'm sorry, sir. You have to turn over your podcasting license. You've uh, you've broken the rule. You've done a solo show without a script. No, if you can do a solo show without a script, do a solo show without a script. That's kind of the the good news, bad news of all things podcasting is you can kind of do whatever you want, which leads me. He said, hitting a marker, we'll, we'll, we'll leave the show notes conversation for a bit. Jim, what is the difference? Now, for the record, your, your answer may be used in the next episode of the School of Podcasting. What's the difference between a conversation and a podcast? Well, I think one could be a subset of the other. So in other words, I think when we think about conversations, that's a little bit of a style. That's at least the way I use the, the, the word. Some people say, how do you podcast? And they say, oh, we're, we're a conversational style, right? We talk back and forth. It, we also say the word interview and that. So um, for me, I think of conversation. I mean, it, 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 
the, that's the style of what you're making in a podcast. Okay. Cause to me, and I'm still working on this. I, I, I now the last couple conversations I've had, I tried as I'm in the conversation, tried to step out and listen to the conversation. And I think the difference, one of the differences is a podcast is meant for public consumption. And consequently you edit out the boring parts of the conversation. Cause I, I have a friend of mine that we talk for long periods of time and we take all sorts of tangents. And there are times that I'm like, mm, that was kind of, you know, I, my sister, I love my sister to death, but her conversations that I have with her bore me to tears because she wants to talk about some guy that, you know, the bass player of Herman's hermits died. And I'm like, I don't know who that is. And I don't care, but I'm, I'm sad that you're sad. So, uh, you know, I, I think that's, uh, I'm just trying to figure out because so many people think like, I get that you want a podcast to sound conversational, mm -hmm. but I think there is a difference. And I, that's the part I haven't quite honed in on. Like, what is the difference between a podcast and a conversation? Cause well, it's so hard to judge because yeah. I listen to some guys. I, I listen to this whiskey podcast called one nation under whiskey. And it's these two guys and they, they have these conversations, but they're talking about the topic as they're doing it. And I find it very, very interesting. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't find everybody's conversations that interesting um, because oftentimes like I'm invested in these two guys. I like these two guys. I'm, I'm interested in these two guys. So their conversation is interesting to me. Right. So does that make every conversation we have, if I just walked around at work and started having conversations with people and just recorded them with that bit, which by the way, an NPR, um, uh, um, Host intern did, did oh, that host okay. where they mic themselves up and all day they just recorded everything hoping to get <laughs> like those moments of good conversation right hey it's one way so it's, it's a way to do it so is all conversation interesting beauty is in the eye of the beholder like a conversation listen you and i have a conversation here right that's right what, it's interesting to some i don't think it's interesting to others and they let us know <laughs> when it's not interesting yeah so it it's it kind of depends, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I listened to Mark Marin and Tom Segura for 20 minutes, and it dawned on me that, hey, I'm bored. And the reason was they were talking about old comedy clubs that don't exist anymore. Now, if I was a comedian, I'd probably be like, oh, my gosh, I totally forgot about the Chuckle Hut in, you know, Dearborn or whatever, you know. But for me, I was like, why am I listening to this? I'm like, oh, because they're celebrities. Because otherwise, I would have bailed a long time ago. So, yeah, it's just one of those things I'm, I haven't quite. This is one where I need to like turn off everything and really focus on what what that is and, and that whole nine yards. Um, should we play what's in the box? Yeah, it's what the time is to play box? what's. It, I need is. here. Do we have music for that? Um, I think we can find some music for that. If nothing else, we'll use the old. Uh, wait, come on, Roadcast. We because uh, we love this music. You know, this is always fun. So this came to me from, um, oh my God, I'm drawing a total blank. Darren Dake from the Coroner podcast. Do, do you um, know what's in it? Like before I have you no idea it. what's in this. Okay. You so opened it's, it, but you don't know what's in it. I, I've opened it so I didn't have to go run with scissors. Uh, but uh, it's about uh, five inches by four inches. It's a square-ish box. Um, so Darren, thank you so much. I have no idea what this is. I'm hoping it's not like a sexual toy or something like that that would be embarrassing uh, i open up the big box and of course we have a smaller box inside and when i open it, it's a white box and i open it up and oh see this the gym would love this it is a coffee oh, mug nice. thank you darren done. oh look at it if they're breathing we're leaving <laughs> cornertalk.com nice very cool thank you darren i like it yeah because uh you know. Are you going to start drinking coffee on the show? Uh, I might. I don't know. A, but are you a coffee guy? I am not a coffee guy. Mm -hmm. I have. Tr mm -hmm. I tried to remember when it was the coffee generation. Join the coffee generation, and I have to put so much stuff in my coffee that it's not coffee anymore. It's like chocolate yeah. milk, basically. Yeah. Like if I go to Starbucks, I get a frappuccino, the basically chocolate milk in a in a bottle kind of thing. So, uh, so. Thank you for that. And 
that's the uh, the fun part is I had to deal with the post office to get that. I have a P.O. box. Here's something that most people don't know. If you have a newsletter, by law, you should have an address in your newsletter somewhere, an actual physical address. So I have a P.O. box. And I will spend money on microphones and things like that. Every year when I get my, I think it's like a hundred and something dollars. It might even be closer to two. It's not cheap. And I have a very small, like nothing fits in my, unless it's a letter, nothing fits in my P.O. box. Maybe a Christmas card. Uh, but every year when I have to pay my P.O. box, because I don't feel like putting my actual address in my newsletter, because you never know when you're going to go to the door and they're like, are you the guy that said on the podcast rodeo show, my, my show was horrible? Yeah, Dave was killed by an upset podcast rodeo guy. So I, I have a P.O. box. So um, that's always kind of fun. But uh, which leads us to our secret. Um, it, it's time to play. It's it's fun games today. We we had what's in the box. Now we're going to play which mic is Dave using. Oh, because. Okay. So what, first of all, what, what mic were you on before? Well, right what? now I'm on the Shure SM7B, okay. Okay. which is on channel one. As he's trying to switch over and we don't hear you yet. He's talking, but I can't hear him. So we'll see if we get his voice at some point. No, it works we... much better if you turn the slider up. Yeah, yeah, there you go. It, it, these little things. So now I'm on the blue Sona microphone. Link in the show notes at askthepodcastcoach.com slash 411. Um, and the fun thing is, so if I, uh, if I were to switch here between the two, it, there's almost no difference. This is a little boomier for some reason. It's, it Maybe because I'm closer. It's fuller. Um, so, it's got a little so, full sound. Yeah. So this is the SM7. This is the this is the um, the blue slash Logitech, whatever you want to call it, Sonia. Yeah, you uh, could both back of them. You could both back of them. You could back both of them away from you because they're they're both a little close at this point. Yeah. But. And so we are back to the SM7B at this point, but they, it's funny because it looks a lot like the SM7B. It's uh, here, let me go on the SM7B so I can show you the, no, I'm on both. Okay. So I'm on the SM7B. Good. So what's cool about this is it looks like the oh, thank SM7B. You. Thank you. Um, so here's that. Um, so it's got a little, like this little wing thing that comes down and then it plugs in the back and what's cool about that is the back of the SM7B has switches unless you put your plate on it, which I don't. And this has just a magnet that you can push on and pull it off. And there are your switches. So one is, if I go back to this, one's a uh, base cut and one is a presence boost. So it's so... <laughs> It's really not that hard, Dave. So if we, uh, so this is the the Sona, and I'm gonna now turn off. Push oh, push it push it a little bit away from you too. You're, it's a little close. We're getting some just over. Here's the over here's the fun here's the fun thing. I can't read it. Oh, <laughs> because of the light in there. Because of the lighting in yeah. here. Yeah, and oh. you're old. <laughs> and I'm old. Do you get? Do you need to get your readers? Oh, you know, the oh, other thing I, is. Glass. When I put this microphone in, I, I'm like, why can I not read this? I could read it last night. The, I have the microphone in upside down. Upside down, yeah. So this this yeah. should be on the other side. Because I was like, why can't I read that? Okay, so this is now with the bass off. This is a little bass roll off, and this is with the – I definitely heard the bass kick in there a little bit. And, yeah. again, I am a little close to this. You're, you are. And, and then this is the – goes the other way. This is a – wow. Yeah, that's a presence boost. So I hear many more S's and T's now um, with that. So here it is with it on. Not it's, bad, though. Yeah, I actually like this a little right, more. It's at the right it, distance. Yeah, yeah and then uh, this is with it off. So that's like a little It's like a little de-esser built into it. And so if I wanted to, I could do this and cut the bass and do this. And now it sounds like I'm uh, – and it, it's a little – it's a little harsh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, – but the cool thing is, right, it's got – oh, also, come on. You know, <laughs> it comes with oh. – with that, a red pop that's, filter. That's, wor that's worth it. Yeah, and if you pop these off, that looks just like the SM7B. I mean, yeah. almost. Um, and these are somehow magnetic. They just kind of slip on and off. So now, you know, what's cool is they can make this a whole... What I'm playing with is the, the windscreen. Yeah. And so 
you know, if you could somehow, if I had a company that would made these in different colors, so like ours would be blue to match the blue and the, ask the podcast coach. So it's um, big but, enough. You could put podcast art on there. Like you could, you could your show thing on there. It's, it's large enough for that. Yeah. And if I, if I had this right to where this little wing thing here in the middle, I mean, I could put a little sticker right here for sure. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So Plenty of real estate there. Now the, the bonus is now granted when you listen to these, you go, yeah, there's a little difference. There's a $50 difference in price. Uh, neither of these are USB. They're meant to go into some sort of interface or whatever. But what I saw was 50 bucks cheaper and every YouTube video I watched said it's pretty close. The other thing I like is when I use the SM7B windscreen that's this size, the the smaller one, not the big giant poofy one I have, I pop this thing. That's why I have the big giant windscreen on the SM7B because I, I get pops when I do that. So this one, I was, I was happy that when I was using the smaller windscreen that it didn't... Uh, it doesn't pop. So yeah, it, it is fun. They're, they're mentioning that when you have the red one on, I refer to windscreens as clown noses. Mm -hmm. And now we have one that actually looks like a, a clown nose. So bring I will it, bring uh, it back for Christmas, right? Let's that, get this Rudolph. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's, it. It's actually not bad. I mean, from a, from a sound standpoint for your yeah. voice, that mic sounds pretty good. And it looks, I think it looks less because it's it's trimmed down a little bit. It's not quite yeah. this big bulky thing that you get with the with the SM7B. Yeah, they it's have like a bulk monster. Yeah, you've got this whole cable coming up here and oh, the whole nine yards, and oh, it's like hmm. So, yeah, so I'll yeah. play with this for the the rest of the show here. But it took yeah. me. Uh, the other thing I didn't realize is I'm using a Samson. Push it back just a little bit more. It, it's oh, better. You're better. Yeah, you're better. A little further away. Being, yeah, a little further away. Yeah. Um. The it's a Samson stand and it's not bad, but this is a OC white, the podcast pro stand. This is just so fluid and ah, where this is like, and again, it's not hard, but it's just a little more like, all right, I got to push. It. Okay. There it is. Now it stays where it's, where it is once I put it there, but the, the OC white, now the OC white also is more expensive. In fact, they have some, like you have to take a mortgage out to get a, a boom arm from OC. We'll see white in some cases. Um, but I, the other thing I liked about this versus the SM7B is the fact that this little gizmo just snaps on. It's got little magnets on it. So if uh, if I'm worried about having the – and it's weird because it's, it's blue, but the back of it says Logie for Logitech because Logitech bought blue. So it's 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 a Logi, it's a Logi blue Sona. So um, – but yeah, so I've I've answered my question. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use because this one I, I'm with you. the The big giant muff on the SM7B covers up half my face, and so um, we'll yeah. we'll see. Just I like the look of this one. Can you can you switch the wind guard back to black to see back what to that? You you don't like the clown nose? <laughs> uh, no, I do I do like it. I'm just kind of now that it's one of those kinds of things where you're thinking about and Mike, we see you in the backstage. We'll we'll get you here in just a second. Um, yeah, I just wondering, uh, I, I wasn't looking for that when you, when you had it on there, but, uh, All I, right. kinda, I like that look, like it kind of did the microphone for you in this setting from this direction disappears in a lot of ways with the black, with the black, uh, windscreen on kind of just disappears into the set. So it's not like you have a big old mic in front of you. And I think it sounds pretty good too. Yeah. Coach Dave says something. I actually like my RE320 better than either of these mics. To me, the I, I'm always a big friend of a little more upper end for my S's and T's. And um, uh, so Coach Dave is saying Daniel uh, J. Lewis has an RE320, which he copied, never needed to change microphones unless I take my show on the road. If I wasn't Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting, I wouldn't have bought this. Hands down, I wouldn't have bought half these mics. But I had enough people like, hey, what have you heard about this? And I was like, ah, crap. And then... The fact that I just discovered this, Sweetwater has a used gear section that I didn't realize. And what I found out is if I wanted to, let's say I, I'm like, I try this out, I use it for a week, I make my video for YouTube, and I'm like, well, I could stick it in my closet and let it depreciate in value. Or you can sell things now on Sweetwater, and they will give you 100% of the money that you sell it for in Sweetwater credit, which is great if you have gear acquisition syndrome. Or they'll give you, I think it was like they take 8% and 
if you take your thing and money. So, um, um, so yeah, so I, I, you know, I might do that. I might just start buying gear and then resell it on, on that. But if I think AppSumo is a scary place, when I went over to the use part of Sweetwater and saw that they had an SM7B for 300 bucks, I was like, Ooh, and it was in mint condition. So, uh, Randy says, Dave sounds harsh to me on the 320. This isn't a 320. This is the blue Sony. Oh, or if he's saying when on the other one. 320. We yeah, used the SM... 320 for a lot of years. I mean, yeah. that was a solid micro. I was a little surprised you moved away from it, to be honest. We... And the it... only reason I did, it went on sale. I never would have bought this. And it was like, oh, it's on sale. I got to buy it. And I was like, okay, now I understand every time. When my uh, ex-wife number one had a serious shoe problem, like serious shoe problem. And uh, I remember many a time I'm asking, okay, how many pairs of shoes do you have? And I'm like, and why did you? You, don't have, you didn't have a serious. Um... Oh, yeah. And she'd go, and how many guitars do you have? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, we all have our, we all have our vices. Have but our the, I, her answer many times was, well, they were on sale. So I was, uh, that, that came back to haunt me when I bought that. I was like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> 20 years later, <laughs> I finally get it. Be great. So, I'm, I'm tempted. I'm a little tempted to change, you know. I've used the 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 twenty one hundred for years now. I use it at work, use it at home, and I'm tempted. And then I kind of go, "Why? It it works just fine with what I do and what I have and what I like and what my sound is." And so, you know, I just keep thinking, "Yeah, it would be nice to have a." I, if I wanted to go completely black, like you've got there, I could get the 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 um, the, the AT. 2005 five it's been yeah. a while since i've said that kind of thing but i don't know it works i like it so in in so i think somebody said in the chat you know if it's working why change it exactly that is the the key hey, can um I get a little more coffee it's been a while you can, you can get a, a little more coffee and uh here we go much oh, better uh, and speak you know while we're doing that we might as well say thank you to some people uh and by that i mean the awesome supporters of Ask the Podcast Coach. You can find them over at askthepodcastcoach.com slash support. You can join our Patreon. You can buy my book, Profit from Your Podcast. You can uh, throw a, a few shekels at Jim if you'd like. You can throw shekels at me. It's all there, askthepodcastcoach.com slash support. And it's that time. Now, if you haven't done this yet, the woman in the tube from, from Amazon, you can put her in to be either male or female now, but also you can have her be British. And so uh, if I, I say, hey, who's uh, open awesome supporters? Podcast awards. Oh, it doesn't reply. That's interesting. Hold on. Can I? Dot com. Hold on. We're going to do this. We're going to give him two seconds because I pre-recorded this. If you're, you're new to the show, this was always a train wreck. And I'm happy to see that it was still a train wreck today. Let's try that again. Who's the awesome supporter for this week? Okay, let me pick from askthepodcastcoach.com slash support. It's Felix at ladinpodcastawards.com. There we go. <laughs> so thank you, Felix. Here I did all this extra work so it would be nice and smooth. <laughs> nice. Uh, but Ask the Podcast Coach runs on PodPage. If you would like to try PodPage, well, then go to trypodpage.com and you can play with it for free. It makes building a website for your podcast with no coding super easy. The last time I did one, it took me um, about 10 minutes. Um, if you need more Jim and who doesn't, go over and check out Home Gadget Geeks at uh, theaverageguy.tv. And if you're thinking of starting a podcast or if you have a podcast and you need to grow it, well, when you think podcasting, Think School of Podcasting, and uh, if you go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash ask, I believe there is a coupon that's automatically uh, put in there. And, of course, uh, to uh, become an awesome supporter so I can buy more microphones, uh, <laughs> go to, go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash support. And actually, one of the reasons I bought – how I was able to buy this one is uh, Sweetwater has a 90-day almost same as cash. It was it, – I think they charged me like an extra – I don't know, five, 10 bucks, but instead of being 350 bucks, it's like a hundred and something for three months. And I was like, I can do that. So there we go. Um, so thanks to all of our awesome supporters and, uh, what else do oh, we, we already did what's in the box. Oh, I should mention to our awesome friends out at, um, wisdom. We have 33 people watching. If you would like to come up on stage underneath my blinking head, there's a little plus sign. And if you click on that, 
that will request that you come up on stage. And of course, if you're watching live, you can go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash live and uh, we're there. But if you want to come in and actually ask a question, uh, you can go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash join. I was going to, I'll, I'll invite him. He doesn't have to come up. I, if, if Coach Dave is uh, presentable, I would love to hear more about text metrics because it sounds like a really cool tool. It sounds like you're having some fun stuff with it. Um, Jim, do you do any, do you have any kind of, uh, I guess at work you have a team that does all the SEO stuff. Um, yeah, they, well, and they work, we, we um, you know, I've got a, a an editor that goes through and we try to, like, he'll go back and check previous titles. So, hey, what have we done? What have we said in previous titles? Let's not repeat the same thing over and over again. He's also, he's been editing for a lot of years, so he kind of knows what works and what doesn't. Um, no, I need to, this is one of those things, those rabbit holes I'm afraid I'd get into is if I started thinking like, okay, I'm going to start writing some show notes in a tool (laughs) that's going to tell me what I should do and what I shouldn't do. And then I'm going to spend an hour optimizing it. And then I'm going to, you know, I'm I'm not saying I shouldn't do it. I probably should. I just haven't prioritized it from a, a time perspective yet. So no, I don't, I don't, I don't have any tools that I use. I mean, it, I have well, a HTML editor tool that I drop it into. So I, if for WordPress, we got a question earlier, Dave, uh, in the chat, by the way, somebody asking if they should be using PowerPress for, for WordPress in, in doing their, you know, in doing, because PowerPress is one of those things that adds a bunch of tools to your show notes, right? Yeah. It's uh, you can have, you can put timestamps in your, description there on your website. And as Jim was talking about, you can click on the timestamp and it will jump right to the, uh, that time in the episode. And you don't have to use Blueberry to use PowerPress. I have it on my site. The reason I never took it off is by the time other tools came available, I had like 300 episodes and I'm not, I'm not replacing 300, 300 players on my website. Um, but it's got that tool you can so it's a it, you can actually use it for your feed. So if you want for a while, I mean, in the early early days of podcasting, before there were media hosts, people would upload their file to their web host, which I do not recommend. But then they would put that link to the MP3 file in PowerPress. PowerPress would make your feed, and it did all the the fun Apple stuff that you need. And so it's a great tool. My only worry about that is, oh man, it's been probably. 10 years now, I had a thing on my website. I was using PowerPress for my feed, even though I was using Libsyn. And I just had, I don't know if it was a Russian hacker or what, but there was, it was denial of service kind of thing. And one of the things I'm working with uh, HostGator at the time was where I was doing that. And they're like, hey, can you go in to the back end of my website and see what's taking up the most traffic? And it's hard to believe, but it was my RSS feed because an RSS feed is nothing but a text file, but it was just through the roof. And they're like, if there's any way you can, you know, get that off. And so I redirected. Luckily, I had always made episodes in Libsyn and just copy and pasted the MP3 file into PowerPress. And so I redirected my feed to look at the Libsyn feed and that got that off there. So that's always my my worry is it's it's another thing that might slow down your website. Now, in reality, is it going to? Probably not. But And if you're using WordPress and PowerPress, it doesn't matter if you're using PowerPress or not. If you're using WordPress, have a backup, at least one, and, and go there, right? So uh, there you go. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a great plugin. That's the other one. It's been around forever. It's solid. But if you're support using... It I, well. I, they support yeah. it really well. Yeah, yeah so... It's got that. You can do category feeds, all sorts of, you know, it's kind of uh, a Swiss army knife of, of podcasting. It just, uh, so it's, so uh, is it only good for WordPress? Yeah. Um, I recommend, I mean, for me, the thing I liked about PowerPress is I controlled it and that's where Todd, like control it's under my domain. It's my feed. Got it. Uh, but I don't worry about anybody that I'm putting a podcast on. I don't worry about them going out of business. Like if I had a a great example is I helped somebody this week and they were moving to Kajabi and I was like, don't move to Kajabi. And and the reason for that is they don't offer a, a change of address. If you go to Kajabi, you're going to have a hard time leaving. And it dawned on me that Blueberry also has this thing called podcast mirror. 
And so if you're a person that's like, nope, I'm moving to Kajabi, uh, put your feed, the Kajabi feed, in Podcast Mirror, and then let's say I was on Libsyn. I would redirect my Libsyn feed, not to Kajabi, because I can't leave. I redirect it to Podcast Mirror, which looks at Kajabi, and that way it's basically Podcast Mirror is FeedBurner, because we all thought FeedBurner was going away. Who knew they were going to revamp it? But nonetheless, it just gives you a way, if you're going to use Kajabi, that later when you go, man, this Kajabi podcasting thing blows, you can leave. Um, because otherwise, how you get out of that is you have to make an episode just for Kajabi that says, if you're listening to this episode, you're you're missing all the new content. Please unsubscribe. Go to my website, blah, 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 dot com slash subscribe and resubscribe to the show to continue this conversation over there. And that will only be on Kajabi. And then you go into all keyword there, all the other apps and update Apple and Google and Spotify and Stitcher and everybody else. You have to say, Hey, uh, which is the, the joy of the 301 redirect. It's a change of address and Kajabi doesn't do that. So, um, but there are a couple other ones. There's uh, I know Castos is a media host and they have simple, seriously simple podcasting. There's another plugin. I'm just not a big fan. I, the other thing with plugins, I think we've all, anybody that's using WordPress has experienced mm -hmm. the white screen of death. Mm -hmm. And I don't want my podcast anywhere near a thing that on a regular basis gives me the white screen of death. So, well, and there's, yeah. there's sometimes there's conflicts in that. I think, uh, yeah. Uh, Christian just upgraded the whole infrastructure at Maple Grove to PHP eight. And that's, you know, WordPress is kind of based on this is a little nerdy again, but PHP has got a lot of stuff tied into that. I, I don't know how or what don't, you know, but, um, and one of the plugins broke. And so mm. I was like, and it's one of the plugins I'd stopped paying for. So he was like, Hey, can you upgrade that? And it was like 30 bucks. So I just upgraded it. Poof, worked just great. So there is, you know, when, anytime you go down this route of hosting it yourself or like PowerPress, you know, I have this saying that options equal confusion. And in PowerPress, there are <laughs> a ton of options, Dave. You can do whatever you want, which is awesome until you don't know what you need or what you want. Right. And you can mess things up pretty fast that way. So just a warning on this, like, you know, yes, you get a lot of ability to do a lot of great things, but it, it, it's as an example, deciding which kind of player that I want to use sometimes in PowerPress, right? There's a couple different options. I can use my yeah. own, embed some other stuff, like just figure it where it goes on the page, some of those kinds of things. That's all awesome unless you don't know how to figure it out. And so it it can be a little overwhelming for someone just, listen, PowerPress plugin is not something you would set up in 15 minutes and have running. You know, you, there's it, some things to figure out in it for sure. It takes a little getting used to um, I don't know if they released it. I think it came out t yesterday, but Road X is coming. So if somebody in the chat room wants to look up Road X, they had a video that was completely useless. It was like, it's coming. Road X is coming. And I was like, uh, okay. And Road X is, is what again exactly? So I think it came out yesterday was the 14th. The other thing we wanted to mention is 8% um, of me is celebrated um, I can Native American Day, uh, and Apple. If you are of Native American ascent, then uh, Apple is looking for to share stories. Um, why this is on LinkedIn? I thought it was weird, but you know who who knew this is where it came up. Um, but Becky from Apple Podcast, it's uh. And here's the thing. I thought October was Hispanic something month, which was weird because it started in the middle of the month. And I was like, wait a minute. Doesn't the first half of October count as, you know, um, our, our awesome supporter today is, is Felix from the Latin Podcast Awards. I'm like, wait, do you not get the whole month of October? And then this from Apple is saying that American Heritage, Native American Heritage Month and maybe it's in November. Let me see this real quick. Uh, nope, it's kind of pointing it out, but they're looking for Native American stories. So if you are of a Native American descent, uh, who knows? You might get a little plug there from uh, from Apple. You never know. Uh, that's coming on. And then I got this question from Facebook. 
It says, so we've been using Zoom to do our podcast remote interviews. Jim, what do you use for interviews? Are you still using Skype? Uh, oh, no. we Everything's on StreamYard. StreamYard, okay. Yeah, everything. So, well, good, because you can help with this then. Uh, so we've been using Zoom to do our podcast remote interviews, but wanted to switch over to StreamYard as that is going to work better for our needs. Uh, with our guest scheduling, we use Calendly and have an integration with Zoom so they would receive a link that would be accessible on the day of the recording. Is there a way to integrate or schedule a recording only or live stream when booking guests for StreamYard? So the the whole point is with Calendly, they can say, oh, I want to, I want to, you know, be on Jim show on November 7th and it automatically sends them a Calendly link. Um, what do you do with StreamYard? Not, not, not that I heard of, not a StreamYard integration with that. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I, I haven't heard of one yet. That'd be, that'd be kind of cool with the service. Cause that those services just integrate with your zoom account. When you set up the account, it automatically generates a zoom link and sends it over so you can do it. We just do that manually. So I, we use, you know, I set things up. We use the Gallup Outlook calendar and I have a special account just for the podcast. Send that over to them. Sometimes, I mean, more and more people are getting these, hey, come just, you can come book my time here. And, uh, and sometimes I send them the request because, you know, you go back and forth on, hey, are you open here? Are you open there? Right. Can you do it this way? Can you do it that way? Um, I just prefer, it takes an email or two, like, hey, what works for you? Okay, let's get this done. Boom. I'll send them an invite. Then the week before I generate, I go into StreamYard, do the, the, the coming weeks uh, podcasts. Usually we're, I think we're doing three a week at this point. So I go in, generate those, create those episodes in StreamYard. That makes them available on YouTube. Grab the StreamYard link, put it in the invite and send it to them. Yeah, it's a little bit of manual work, but I actually prefer it to automatic because it, it, it makes me do it. <laughs> you know, it, it, get, I, it makes me think about, okay, here's the coming week and here's what's coming up. And some of the, Dave, there's been plenty of times that on Friday afternoon I've looked and I'm like, oh crap, that's first thing Monday. <laughs> you know, <laughs> be, <laughs> you're like, uh, ooh, did, did we do a pre-call? Have I, have I worked through this? So the automatic processes are nice. So this guy needs to kind of be in it on a, from a manual standpoint, just to realize, hey, some things are coming up that I need to be aware of. So that's, that's what we do. What I've done is I use Acuity Scheduling, which is now Squarespace Scheduling. They bought uh, Acuity. And you can set up different types. Like I have, if you hire me for a strategy session, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions on that. If you are a member of the School of Podcasting and you need a couple questions answered, there's a different. that's a different type of meeting. So I have different questions. I really like that that system. And so what I did was it also gives you the ability to to send an email like, hey, thanks so much for scheduling this and that. And I just put in it, hey, your uh, – now, if it's a school of podcasting member, it integrates with Zoom. So I use Zoom for that. But for my people, that like if it's a podcast interview, well, I'm going to be using Squadcast for that. And so I say I will be sending you shortly a link to our uh, conversation in Squadcast. And then that's where I, I start the – you know, on the day of the interview, please use Chrome. Please be in a quiet room with the best microphone available, blah, blah, blah. And then the other thing, even though it puts it on their calendar, I still, on the day of the interview, I will email them in the morning and go, looking forward to our conversation, you know, this evening or whenever. Just want to make sure life hasn't happened. Are we still good for whatever the time is? And I, ever since I've started doing that, I don't have people do no shows because I've had people go, Oh, I'm so glad you did this. Grandma died again. I can't make it tonight. But when I just like say, ah, you know, there's a calendar thing. It'll remind them. I'm like, mm. you know, and, and it's best to know that in the morning, not a half hour before when you turn down, you know, family time. No, no, I got an interview tonight. And then you're sitting there on your computer and nobody's going to show up. And, um, but it's uh, so that's how I handle it. it. Yeah, Calendly does integrate with Zoom. Um, oh, I didn't think about this. You could, you might try Zapier. So I wish I was so bummed. Calendly used to have an affiliate program, and for whatever reason, they quit it. Probably because they didn't need it. Because everybody and their brother, when people go, "What should I use for scheduling?" Everybody just says Calendly because there's a free version and then a paid version. So I guess if you don't need that extra bonus, you don't need that. Um, so, um, 
so she says, how, how many of you, uh, DR says, how many are you allowed for that, uh, acuity feature? Um, in terms of, well, usually my interviews are just one person, but it does do a ton of stuff. Like if I want to sell classes with a limited number of seats, I can do that in acuity. Um, you can have, uh, at least for me, I can have unlimited types of meetings. So I have one that's, um, if somebody says, um, Hey, would you like to be on my show? Um, if they haven't sent me a calendar link, I will send them a link and that's just called be on your show. So they then schedule time on my calendar, but that's totally different. It's like, who is your audience? What are you looking like? Why are you, why do you want me as a guest? That whole thing. So, um, but no, the reminder part. Yeah. I'm doing that manually. I, I basically, cause I will look up on my calendar. I'm like, Oh, I have a, an interview with Jim today. And even though, you know, Calendly, Acuity, there's a, uh, there's one on AppSumo that's got a lifetime deal. They have a really super simple calendar tool. Um, I still do it manually. Just number one, because it doesn't look automated. Uh, and then number two, I've just had people, you know, they I don't know why they don't reply to the automated one that says, just a reminder, you've got a thing with Dave at 2 o'clock today. So, um but yeah, uh, yeah. Dr. says tidy cow is a one-time thing in AppSumo. So, adding again to the the, <laughs> the link list, which is fine because there's an there's an affiliate program for tidy cow. So, and if you're looking for just simple scheduling, that's a great tool. So, I if I I've, there are times when I thought of canceling my acuity and going to that. So I see in the uh, in the green room we have the one and only. Coach Dave, so look at your background. Holy cow. Good He's morning, on Mars, guys. man. How cool is that? <laughs> I didn't do my hair this morning. You caught me off guard. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. I think I've got something for that. I do. There we go. He's here all week. Excellent. Um, how are you, my friend? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back out on the show. It's. I think this is my 2022 appearance. I think I had That's one it. in 2021. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So tell me about this text metrics thing. Yeah, I, I want to, uh, I'll tell you about text metrics and maybe I can share my screen and show you, you know, take you a mm. walk through it. But uh, somebody mentioned Tidy Cow. Yeah. I use that myself and, uh, or I did use that myself and the and the, the one limitation with it, and they know it's a bug. If you set up a an appointment in Tidy Cow, everything works fine. You know, I've got my Tidy Cal, uh, you know, connected to my Zoom, so it automatically sets that all up and everything. Right. Uh, but if you set up a an appointment in like your Outlook directly, mm. it won't it won't then go back and update Tidy Cal? So there's a there's a disconnect. They said it takes like 24 hours or something, and for most of us, I think that's that's too long. But yeah, just a minor yeah. bug in that one. But it's only like 19 bucks or 29 bucks or something. So it's it's ridiculously cheap for a lifetime you know, uh, whatever you call it, subscription to that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for that. I didn't realize that. All right. So let's get into text metrics. Can I share or no? Oh, yeah. You should be able to. I got to figure out how do I, oh, here we go. It's been a Down while the, since I've been in this. The lovely joys of StreamYard. StreamYard, yes. And should I think down at the bottom? Yep, I'm going to see it. I see it. I'm just going to share a screen. And, and then we'll all get small. I just We're going to get one small. Window. One day I got really small and walked inside a vacuum cleaner. And then the drug wore off. <laughs> I wonder if, is that a, is that a violation of, uh, is there some. Is that um, a copyright to copyright? quote? Copyright, yeah. I retain the shape of a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> well, Randy it's was quoting him. I'm with a vacuum cleaner today. It's a, it, that's it. Um bad randy had one that was great from steve martin it's like some people are good with words other people <laughs> i forget what it was but it was so all right so this is text metrics now is this a wordpress thing it looks very wordpressy it does feel wordpressy but it's not it's a separate it's a standalone app it's right at text metrics okay uh, it has projects and it has pages and what i'm going to take you into is just kind of show you what a what a page looks like Okay. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Like if I wanted to do uh, ask the podcast, excuse me, ask the this, podcast coach. Dot com, right? That's you. Yeah. I can actually import that page. Ah, uh, interesting. Directly. Look, Go ahead. 
This looks a lot like Surfer SEO. In fact, they all eventually kind of look like each other, but this is interesting. Because I can see where it, on, the, on the screen we're seeing, I can see where it's been grading different pages and such. So, yeah. and this is free if I remember right, right? They have a free tier? Uh, I do not have the free tier. Okay. I got mine through uh, AppSumo, but uh. you can see some <laughs> of the show notes that I've done here, like this one in mental health. And I just massaged it until it came up to 100 score. I've got some other ones down here. This one on childhood obesity um, obviously didn't get a very good score. And that's probably because I didn't have a lot of content in that one. But if we, if we look at one of these pages, what I do is I start off with the page and I just start typing in my show notes here. Right. And as I type in my show notes, this uh, score on the right uh, just up and down. And then it tells you specifically what you're missing. Like in this case, uh, I've hit everything correctly. So I've got all the, you know, headings have been scored green, the page description, the metadata that's up in the page description, the page title. Uh, sometimes it'll tell you, you know, you didn't put in a, an image or something because I never put images into my text metrics. I do that when I get over to uh, my show notes. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a neat way to kind of go through that's that one here is one that looks good. And I'll show you one that looks bad. Okay. So you see the difference. I see where they do have a, a WordPress plugin. They have a Joomla plugin Drupal. There's a word I haven't said in about oh, six yeah. years. Yeah. And here, if you look at this one, this is just something that I wrote on, um, yeah, on childhood obesity. And I did put the images and stuff in here, but I didn't tag, I didn't put the H1 tag in here. So if I go up here and I make something like uh, um, this is my title and I were to make this uh, H1, uh, where's my, of course that really messed things up, but you can see how it changed. Yeah it automatically said, okay, now you've got the H1 title. And sometimes I just copy out of my show notes and I just paste it in here. And sometimes I actually start working in here, but I just use this to massage the SEO a little bit. And then I what copy the whole thing and paste it right back into my show notes. Yeah. What, what do you think, what do you do differently because of this tool? Like what's this tool is what I do differently. Uh, okay. Because I know for me, when I do this, it'll say things like you need more of your keyword or you need. And that's like you said, you you add a couple headings in here with some keywords or things like that. It's just because uh, I forget I was using uh, Surfer SEO for a while and it, it looks very similar to this where you basically put it in. It has a WordPress plugin where you basically put, just pull up a page and it's like, yeah, you need to add this to that and you need to do this and that. And I was like, Hmm, never thought of that. Uh, most of the time it's just, I need to add more stuff. So just make it it's longer. It's made me time. aware of the structure that I need. Um, so I've, I've become a little more conscious of it, but like I said in the chat room, I don't obsess over uh, SEO. Right. Like to me, I'd rather, I'd rather pay attention to the message. I want to make sure my, my sources are cited correctly. I'll dump it into a tool like this just so that I can have like a, a super brain sitting over me and telling me, you know, here's what you have to do for SEO. But when I go back into my WordPress site and I look at the, um, the metrics and how the pages have been ranking, uh, the entire site is ranked better as a result of doing this. I don't really know what's going on behind the scenes, to be honest. I have no idea what this thing is doing or why the formula is the way it is. I just try to make the little circle turn green. And when I do that, I copy it back into my show notes and I'm an SEO wizard, just like that. There you go. Uh, DR wants to know what, do you know what you're, or do you feel comfortable saying what you're paying for this at the moment? Yes, I can. I can tell you exactly what I'm paying for it is zero. Oh, that's right. Cause you got it on an app sumo deal. Yeah. This <laughs> This was an AppSumo deal. I want to say I, I picked this up maybe, I don't know, six years ago, something like that. Uh, I don't have any idea what the pricing is. I mean, we can well, look they, at it. They but. don't post it on their site. It says pricing depends on oh. usage and organization size. We're happy to give scope of your needs and present a quote. Just give us a call. Yeah. And of course that requires a, uh, yeah. I hate people that don't give me a price. It's like, ah, it depends on how much money you have. I'm like, really? Come on now. Um, I really don't use any of the other features in here except right. that little magic copy it in, massage it, take it up right back out again. That's all I do with this. Yeah. 
it's interesting. Like I say, I, I was using Surfer. I, uh, I'm trying to see what I have now that I put because it was funny. I said, look, if I'm going to not use software, let's let's find one that I can pay for once and then not use it because that's really oh, I am using Neuron Writer, um, which is an AppSumo deal. Um, that does a lot of what you're doing. And I saw it and was like, oh, this looks just like Surfer SEO. Surfer SEO was like a hundred bucks a month. And I was like, let's see, I've been using this for four months and I've used it uh, twice. And I went, yeah, that's that's not a good investment. So I can buy more microphones with that. So excellent. All right, my man. Well, thank, thank you for answering for the- if I, can, uh, if I can help out. Yeah, happy to happy to pop in. Hi to everybody and, in the chat room. Well, before you leave, what what is your website? Uh, it's the soccer sidelines.com and uh, that show has uh, fizzled. Like I haven't really published anything since COVID kicked in. And that's really because I mean, youth soccer and the entire youth sports industry was decimated by COVID and taking everybody off the field. And uh, it really torpedoed us, but I do have uh, my business is at, um, at tworld.com and you can find us out there. Um, we, we buy and sell, uh, we help people buy and sell businesses and franchises and things like that. Oh, so cool. that's, that's the, that's how I actually make money. There we go. Awesome. Thanks, well, thanks coach Dave. All right. We'll see you. Bye-bye. See you. Take care. Interesting stuff. And that's, I can see where like, we're like you were talking, like you can really, I, I like the way oh, he does that. Sure. It's like he, he puts yeah. in his stuff and then basically he's using that almost like a low hanging fruit. Like here's some stuff you might have missed, yeah. and he adds that. But you could totally just get lost in this. I I know I have a um, one of my clients has, I think it's Yoast SEO plugin, and she obsesses over. Oh, it's it's only up to eighty seven percent. I need to add more. And I'm like, okay, because in the end, um, Neil Headley says this because Neil's a copywriter has a copywriting course, and uh, he said, you know, you can write for the machines and the algorithms, he goes, but an algorithm has never pushed buy now ever. Yeah. He goes, that's, that's done by a human. He goes, so he goes, you might be able to attract people to your website. He goes, but in the end, a human is going to make the decision to buy. And I was like, that's a really good point. So that's, uh, it's one of those things too, that it just, for me, I always try to write for people when I, you know, write my show notes or my blog posts or whatever, and um, that's I, that's always been. And any if you talk to, uh, I have a friend of mine, Marcus Couch, who's much more versed in SEO and tools. And uh, I've heard Todd say this, Todd Cochran, that uh, you know, in the end, write for people. Like if you don't have time to do SEO, just write for people and write something good. You know, that's where um, a lot of these Word Hero and all these, you know, Jasper. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Where, uh, but. Um, you know, it's, you can get lost in those things writing for a robot. So uh, Craig says, isn't this really just Yoast for WordPress? Yeah. That, that's why I'm kind of saying now that I've seen text metrics and I've seen uh, whatever the heck I mentioned, neuro writer. Um, and I've seen surfer SEO. They all kind of do the same thing. So, and even uh, the one I mentioned earlier, long tail pro that's more of a keyword tool but they all kind of do the same thing. And I watched a video yesterday that said there is no tool because some of these, like you type in a keyword and it'll be like, Oh, here are the top keywords in your genre. And they're like, yeah, like that might be slightly true, but they, they're kind of saying the internet is so huge that you can't really say this is the definitive top keywords because you would have to have this ginormous database. And I was like, that's, I've never heard that statement before where they're like, cause they were, I was looking up long tail pro and they're like, look, it's not a bad tool, but it's not as, you know, and they were saying that um, they did, I forget what it was. Some, some phrase and long tail pro was like, nobody's searching for that, but they wrote the blog post for people cause they knew their community. They knew a lot of people were looking for this. They put it out, made it the keyword, and presto, they got tons of traffic. They're like, so, you know, they're like, these things are not gospel. They're like, you can use them like Dave is doing. Use it to massage and give you an insight, maybe something you missed. But uh, they're, you know, the whole like, use this tool and get to the top page of Google. I'm like, mm, mm, not really sure about that. You could, uh, though. You could. Yeah. I mean, there's some, there's some good advice there. 
Um, de- definitely have a better shot. Like Coach Dave said, he's, his SEO has gone up. So I, if you were new. I, I think you want to use it in a way where it, you use it to improve your own writing. This, it's the same thing with Jasper, right? Use it to improve your own writing. Don't use it to write. You know, that you're, you're, you're at the end of the day, it really should. Uh, this is, uh, this is my opinion. The views, <laughs> the, the views and expressed in this statement is my opinion. I think oftentimes we, we, I see, and I see this in a lot of the Jasper user groups is like, Hey, I want Jasper to write a book for me. What three words do I need to use for it to do that? And you kind of go, Hmm, not sure that's the real intent of that. You know, it, 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 in, in the sense of, of, like use these to improve your process. My opinion again, not don't 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 try to bow to them and let them because they they don't know they don't know what you're trying to do, right? I've been yeah. watching more stuff on YouTube, and it's it's amazing watching content creators explain how to grow their YouTube channel. I was so amazed, Jim, that number one, um, come up with a genre that you're trying to you know communicate with. Um, uh, write good titles for your, your videos and then, uh, try to help people and bring value. I was like, I've never heard this before. Bring value and know who you're talking to. I was like, it's, you know, granted there are things, um, that you can do. And I see things on YouTube that people are doing, but in the end, it kind of boils down to just bring value and then make sure to try to tell other people about it. Um, Craig says, I'm currently doing a YouTube course that teaches to choose keywords and titles before creating the content. I wonder if it's the same for podcasts. Maybe. I, I know um, Tim Schmoyer over at Video Creators, he did a thing on keywords and was saying that they're important, but they're not. He, he thinks people are putting too much emphasis on it. So I think this is one of those cases, like Jim was saying, I think it's going to be different for everybody. And it depends on the tool. But I think in the end, if you kind of just focus on people, you know, it might help you. Um, I remember when I, I started the weight loss, the logical weight loss podcast, I, I looked up weight loss. I looked up um, like diet and healthy and all other, these other keywords. And all I did was went to Google and like how many searches for weight loss, how many searches for losing weight, how many searches for diet. And I just made a little spreadsheet. And the one that got the most searches was weight loss. And I was like, all right, it's the logical weight loss podcast. It is. So, uh, that's how I use it sometimes. So, you know, why why do you use the word logical? Uh, because it's me (laughs) and that's, and so it was very much as opposed to, which is funny because so much of weight loss is not logical. It's all mental. You know, I, I feel in, in it's a circle. If I feel like crap, because, I didn't get that deal I thought I was going to get and nobody loves me. I'm going to go eat worms. So how do you solve that? You go to the fridge and you eat some ice cream and then you step on the scale and the scale goes up and that makes you feel bad, which makes you go to the fridge, which makes the, you know, it's this this circle thing. So my whole thing was eat less, exercise more. You know, that's very logical kind of thing. So um, that just tied into me and it just seemed to, where everybody else was doing the keto and the, you know, the grapefruit and the popcorn and the, you know, apple cider, you know, it was like, this is just, let's look at all these things. And in the end, um, I, I, it's funny. I, I quit that show. I, I basically told my audience, I will do this podcast now on a, when I feel like it basis. And I canceled my Patreon and everything else. I just, I just got bored with it. And then I got a sponsor and I was like, ugh, now I got to do the show. <laughs> And I, I, I really, they were very persistent because I'm like, nah, the show's kind of dead. And they're like, well, if we do this and that, and I was like, eh, okay, I can do 10 more episodes. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Jason says, going back to SEO, he deleted all the Yo stuff off my sites. It was causing incessant logging, logout issues. Well, that goes back to why I don't, again, PowerPress is a great plugin. It's not PowerPress. It's all the other plugins and the the shenanigans that happen on WordPress, which is why I don't use it in, except for a few of my uh, a few of my websites. Uh, I just don't. I, I love it, but like I can say I use uh, Managed WP as a backup. I think I have a backup on my web host, and then I think I have a plugin that backups to Dropbox or something like that. I just 
I've just had way too many times when everything's fine and oh, great, you know, Thanksgiving is next week and you go to your website and you're like, what? And it's just a white screen of nothing. And you're like, damn you. It's always the holiday. It's always the holiday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. day after Friday, I'm taking the day off, long weekend, here we go, white screen of death. And you're like, ah, it's like, drives me nuts. So, but uh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and start uh, wrapping things up here. Jim, what's coming up on uh, the average guy.tv? Yeah, Edward Weining, uh, Weininger uh, joins us. He's the president of Alpha Bitcoin here in Omaha. Mm. We had a kind of a, a show where we talk a little bit about where, where is cryptocurrency today? And, uh, you know, it's real popular for a while. It's kind of been waning some as the price has been down. So Edwards joins us. We have a great conversation. It's actually just a, sh- a short, tight hour. So if you want to join us, I'll be posting it a little bit later today, homegadgetgeeks.com. And on the School of Podcasting, as you heard me say, I'm I'm looking at a couple things, one of which is what's the difference between a conversation and a podcast? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull that out of my head. I used my quote. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, We'll be talking a little bit, some of, really, a lot of the stuff we did today, I'll I'll kind of, again, summarize my thoughts on this microphone, and a couple couple other things we got coming up on the School of Podcasting. Want to say thanks to uh, Mark over at podcastbranding.co, and Dan over on basedonatruestorypodcast.com. Thanks to the 20 people that are still hanging out here in the chat room, and thanks to everyone at Wisdom, 59 people on Wisdom. And again, if you wanted to ask a question on wisdom, you could have clicked on the plus sign. But hey, if, you, uh, if you're a listener to this and you're like, oh, I can never make it live, go out to askthepodcastcoach.com. There's a little microphone in the bottom right-hand corner. You can leave a message there, and we'll play it on the show and answer it on the next show. And plus, I'll also uh, probably answer the question before next Saturday, just so you don't have to wait. But uh, thanks, for everybody, for showing up. Enjoy uh, the fall. This weekend in Ohio is the week. If you want to go look at the trees, do it this weekend because the snow is coming. So thanks so much. We'll see you next week with another episode of Ask the Podcast Coach. And until then, happy podcasting.